Uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, converting all the words in a corpus into vectors. Uh, this is going to be a very important topic for the uh, all the lectures that we are going to be uh, hearing from now onwards. So, uh, before getting into the uh, detail, uh, let me uh, first recap of what we have done earlier. Uh, in the earlier classes, we saw how why NLP is uh, hard. Uh, we gave some examples in terms of uh, uh, sentences and we wanted those sentences to be converted into a form that can be understood by the machine. So, even for a human, it, you know it is going to be very hard for uh, uh, to understand certain sentences. So, how are you going to make the machine to understand some sentences which are even hum hard for humans. Uh, so, we uh, mentioned that it, it was pretty hard. Uh, so, this uh, NLP is a very hard problem. And then uh, we started looking at the various corpus that uh, was available to us uh, with respect to uh, the terms or the word frequencies. Uh, we actually counted how many words are present in a given document and then we introduced the term uh, inverse document frequency. Uh, and then uh, we actually introduced some empirical uh, formula or the laws uh, that gave us some prediction in terms of the vocabulary when you given the corpus using the Heap's law. And then Zipp's law gave us some ideas in terms of the kind of frequency distribution of every word in an empirical way. And then uh, we also uh, looked at another uh, type token ratio which measured the lexical density uh, of a given corpus uh, using which you know you can find out what kind of vocabulary or how rich that particular document or the corpus, corpus is with respect to uh, the vocabulary in English. And then uh, we brought in one interesting concept uh, by converting all the documents into a binary format that means every word uh, present in a document uh, is uh, given a binary value either it is present or not present and then we constructed one a binary incident matrix for the whole corpus and then we try to apply some binary uh, rules for information retrieval. Uh, and you know well that uh, when you use a binary uh, uh, operations, it is not possible for you to rank the document within a corpus. So, we brought in the idea of TF-IDF and how TF-IDF could be used to rank those documents. So, you must have uh, uh, understood by now, uh, we are looking at the corpus in terms of uh, the data that is present inside with respect to the frequency of the words uh, and then uh, uh, trying to find out how those frequencies could be used uh, to retrieve the documents in the given corpus, given a query and so on. So, uh, this is going to be the path that we are going to follow uh, throughout this uh, uh, course, uh, where uh, we will be looking at the documents with respect to the data. That means, the whole approach is going to be data driven. That means, we are not going to be using a lot of linguistic ideas into this. We will be using a lot of uh, statistics and probability ideas into the document and then see how those things could help us in terms of understanding a uh, document. Uh, you are also are aware at this point in time that uh, the idea of the entire exercise is to find the meaning of the word. So, we so far have not come to that level. So, we are now in the progression towards uh, understanding the meaning of the word from the corpus without really looking at the dictionary and so on. So, we will get to that part little later, but uh, today we will focus mainly in terms of how do I really convert those words into uh, vectors and then how do I use that are available in the vector algebra to retrieve documents and do certain other operation and so on. Okay. So, uh, what I will be doing today uh, in this lecture is, I will just introduce the basic concept of the vector space. I am sure some of you are aware of this. Uh, for those who are not familiar with this, I will just give a few minutes introduction to two dimensional vector space and three dimensional vector space and what we represent in uh, these spaces. And then we try to map those uh, vector space into the uh, words and documents and how we actually map words 
uh, as axis in, uh, in the uh, vector space and then how do we represent a document as a point in the vector space which in, uh, contains a lot of terms uh, and so on. Okay. And then we will bring in the concept of query modeling uh, and then later we will talk about uh, how do we really find out whether documents are uh, similar. If for example, if you have multiple documents in the given corpus, you want to find out uh, the closeness of one document with the other. So, we have some measures that we will introduce in this class. Uh, and then uh, we will also mention what could be the suitable measure uh, if you want to find the document similarity. Uh, we will look at one of the demos uh, uh, in the document similarity that would be on cosine similarity. And then uh, we will introduce uh, what is a word vector uh, really and then uh, represent them in terms of a one hot vector. And then uh, later we will bring in the concept of how do we represent relationship among the terms uh, with respect to easy relationship or some composition based uh, operations and so on. And uh, finally, we will uh, show one uh, example of why uh, this could be useful in terms of named uh, ent entity extraction using the information extraction model. Okay. So, let us move on uh, to the first uh, uh, slide in this exercise which is about uh, two dimensional vector space. Uh, two dimensional vector space is defined as a set of linearly independent basis vectors with two axes each axis corresponds to a dimension in the vector space. So, if you look at the uh, diagram here, so we have a linearly independent vectors x and y. Okay. So, what that means is any operation that you perform uh, using this uh, particular uh, linear basis vector will not result in a value, it will always result in a null value. That means, they are uh, in the uh, vector space time, they are orthog orthogonal to each other, they are in this fashion. Okay. So, if you want to represent a point which corresponds to both these axes, we just uh, uh, find out what is the value of that point with respect to the x axis and y axis and then mark that point. So, that let us call that as a as a point P uh, which measures x from the uh, uh, x in the x direction and then y in the y direction. Okay. And then next what we are going to do is we are going to define a vector you probably uh, familiar with this vector is uh, going to give you the position as well as the direction. So, now if you connect uh, the 0, 0 to the point and then now it has a direction attached to it, this is a vector. So, now P becomes a vector in this space. So, extending this uh, to the third dimension, uh, we have one more axis uh, is, is here. And then the same uh, notation that I am using, a point is represented as uh, uh, three variables here x, y and z and then the vector in the three dimension is uh, mentioned here. Okay. So, that means, if you are uh, standing in front of a corner of the of three walls right, and then your x, y, z would be here somewhere. right? Uh, so, again uh, if you look at this all these uh, basis vectors are uh, independent uh, and any vector operation for example, a dot uh, product of x and y or x and z would result in a 0 value. So, we are going to map the same uh, space vector space for words and then see how it looks. <coughs> so, now let us assume um, that all the words in the corpus are considered as linearly independent basis vectors. That means, every word is different, they are not connected to any other word. Suppose, if you are having about 300 words, all 300 words are independent and they have no relationship to each other. That means, if I do a dot product of a word A and B, that means, the result would be going to be, uh, would be uh, 0. So, uh, again we will be using the notation of uh, V, uh, this is the length of your vocabulary. Uh, uh, if you consider all of them as linear and then all the vectors uh, related to the words in the vocabulary are linearly independent and they do not have any relationship with each other and they are represented in the continuous uh, vector space R. Okay. Uh, 
So, as I mentioned earlier again uh, like in the uh, case where I have introduced the uh, vector space, every word now represents an axis. Okay. So, earlier we had x and y for the uh, uh, namesake, now we are going to be representing them with respect to words, every word will ac occupy one axis. So, that means, if you have uh, uh, the size as v, that means we are going to have uh, v axis in that particular vector space. Uh, I am giving two examples here, uh, I am sure you know that the vocabulary of uh, any uh, language is more than uh, 10,000. Uh, in the case of uh, English, it is more than a million. Uh, so, for example, if you take one uh, corpus and then find out what is the vocabulary within that corpus, uh, you will have some number. For example, if you uh, take the Emma corpus given from the NLTK uh, platform, uh, it is going to be about uh, 7079. That means, there is going to be 7079 axes uh, in that vector space. Uh, it is very hard to imagine beyond 3, but uh, this is how it is going to be in the uh, natural language processing if you want to represent all the words in terms of access. Uh, if you look at the Google News corpus, it contains about 3 million words. That means, we are going to have 3 million access in that real space of R. So, it is very huge, it is very huge and it is very difficult to imagine that kind of access uh, uh, for many of us. Okay. Uh, so, how do I represent uh, the documents? Okay. So, now we know that every word is representing uh, uh, one axis. So, where is the document coming into play? So, you know that document contains a lot of terms. right? Here again I am uh, repeating the terms are either words or the combination of words or phrases. Okay. So, we will be using terms in general in most of the cases here. So, uh, the document that we are talking about now contains lots of terms. Correct. So, that means, uh, a document is a point in that vector space occupied by that uh, vectors of words in that particular document. Suppose, if the document contains about 100 words, that means, a, a document is represented by those 100 uh, uh, points in that space. Okay. So, so, I mentioned already that combination of the terms represent a document vector. Uh, in that particular vector space. Uh, it is going to be very highly uh, dimensional and it is going to be very hard uh, to really look at it from the two dimensional display that we have. So, what I am going to do is I am going to just take uh, a simple example where there are only three documents uh, and these three documents are going to contain words uh, which are car, uh, good and mechanic. Okay. That means, uh, good is represented in this axis, car uh, in the usual y axis and then mechanic in the usual z axis or z axis. Okay. Uh, and we have three documents here, the document 1 contains all three words, document 2 contains only good and mechanic, document 3 contains car and mechanic. So, if you want to represent the document 1 in that three dimensional space, it is going to be uh, here right. And then if you want to represent good and mechanic, so it is going to be in this uh, between these two axes good and mechanic here and then car and mechanics in this space. So, now uh, we actually uh, um, created a, a binary incident matrix for all of those and then represented them uh, in the uh, three dimensional space. Uh, in general, uh, these words are represented using TF IDF. Okay. So, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be representing them in terms of uh, these uh, values of these vectors. So, this is your document vector. Okay, and this is your word vector for all the documents in that space. So, let me see how uh, we can represent uh, those documents. See, if you look at carefully uh, the 
right hand side of this slide, uh, we have a document one uh, having the word good and mechanic, document two again having good and mechanic, document three is again having a good and mechanic. That means, I am going to only look at this particular axis okay, for our uh, representation of these documents. So, now uh, a document 1 is uh, very close to the uh, good axis. right? So, if you look at the value of document 1, it is pretty high when compared to what you have for mechanic. That means, there is a good alignment of this document closer to the uh, axis good rather than to the uh, other space, but it is represented in that two dimensional space uh, which is marked here. Okay. So, I can represent a document 3, again if you look at document 3, it is pretty close to mechanic than to the axis good, uh, maybe because there are more number of terms that are representing mechanic than good in this case. So, that is why D 3 is pretty close to mechanic. And then if you look at uh, D 2, uh, which has a fair amount of representation from good as well as from mechanics. That is why it is somewhere in the middle. So, this is the actual space that we are looking at and all the document that contain those two words would be represented in this space. Okay. And the length of that particular document depends on how uh, those frequencies are distributed in the document. 